I want to talk to you about a really weird kind of fear-mongering that I see going on within the Linux community and really within the broader free and open source software community. And this is the fear-mongering regarding maintenance mode software or software that's not actively being maintained because i get these kinds of questions a lot from viewers of my channel i often get questions about hey dt should i be running whatever piece of software because it's no longer actively maintained or it hasn't seen a release in however many months or however many years should i be running this piece of software is it safe is it dangerous what should i do and, and the reason people ask this is because a lot of people spread this kind of misinformation, especially on Linux forums, free and open source software forums, about if a project isn't seeing active maintenance, if it's not seeing active commits, that it's a dead project and therefore you shouldn't use it. And that's not necessarily the case. Just because a piece of software hasn't seen a release in a long time doesn't necessarily make it dangerous. It doesn't make it unsafe. It doesn't necessarily mean there's any security vulnerabilities. It depends on the type of software. For example, a web browser. There is a lot of people that try to attack you via the web browser. I would never run a web browser that wasn't actively maintained. The Linux kernel, the Linux kernel has to be actively maintained for security vulnerabilities because hackers are always attacking the kernel. So the minute that the kernel team drops the ball, we're all gonna be in trouble, right? So you want your kernel to be actively maintained. You want your web browsers to be actively maintained. You probably want your email client to be actively maintained. But 95% of the software that you run on your computer doesn't necessarily have to be actively maintained. Most of the software on my computer, for example, most of the software on your computer is feature complete. It does a simple task. A lot of these programs, they, they do one thing, they do one thing well. It's the Unix philosophy, right? A lot of, especially your command line programs, for example, they have one task. And if that program already accomplishes what it was set out to do, what it was designed to do, obviously it's not going to see any further development. It's not going to see any further releases because it was designed for one task. It already does that. It is feature complete at that point. So in some cases, some of the command line programs that you run on your Linux machine or other Unix-like operating systems like the BSDs or the various Unix flavors, yeah, some of those command line programs often haven't had a release in many years. Does that make them unsafe? No, it's perfectly fine. One of the best examples of a piece of software that is essentially in maintenance mode, and it has been in maintenance mode for a couple of decades, is the VI editor. VI has not had a major release, I think, in, since 2004, 2005. It's been a long time since the VI editor at a release. You know why? It's because it's in maintenance mode. VI pretty much already does what the creators envisioned it to do and at some point they just quit adding new features. But that's alright because VI was forked back in the 1990s for Vim, right? VI improved is Vim. And you know, if, if you're really concerned that you know, for whatever reason, you shouldn't be running VI. Well, you could always run Vim or some of the other forks of VI or Vim has its own forks like NeoVim. They see active maintenance and they see all kinds of new features. Just thousands of new features have been added to those projects that VI, for example, doesn't have like syntax highlighting and all that. So you have these other projects, but VI is really designed to be really minimal and simple and VI is actually the default editor on most Unix like operating systems. Think about all the millions of Linux servers around the world, BSD servers, Unix servers. You know what editor is on almost all of those systems? VI, right? So is VI safe? Yes, VI is perfectly safe. If it wasn't safe, then all these countless millions of servers around the world wouldn't have VI as their editor. There's nothing wrong with a program being essentially in maintenance mode. And of course, maintenance mode, a, lo a lot of people like to label these projects as abandonware, right? That's another term that gets thrown around. They've been abandoned because nobody's really doing anything with it. Now, that, that sounds a little more scary, right? When I say something's in maintenance mode, that sounds, oh, okay. 
that, that doesn't sound too bad. Well, when I say, you know, VI is abandoned where then people are like, whoa, it's been abandoned. Something must be wrong with it. Maybe I shouldn't use it. Well, it's really kind of the same thing. It's just one has more of a negative connotation than the other. Most of you guys are running window managers, for example, that haven't seen a release in many years. How many of you guys have used the Openbox window manager? I love Openbox. It's one of my favorite floating window managers. Openbox has not had a release in many, many years. You know why? It's because Openbox is considered feature complete. Like the, the developers behind Openbox, they reached a point of, hey, Openbox is is pretty much done. It does everything we envisioned Openbox to do as a standalone floating window manager. So it's not really being actively maintained anymore. Now, again, is that okay? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Openbox is still used by millions of Linux users around the world. Many desktop environments use the Openbox window manager as their default window manager, like LXDE. Openbox was the default window manager for LXDE, and it still is. LXQt, many LXQt distributions actually use Openbox as the window manager for the LXQt desktop environment. So there's nothing wrong with it, right? Just because it's in maintenance mode, or some people would consider it possibly abandoned, where again, doesn't make it unsafe. Now, I also need to mention Xorg because Xorg is one that really gets thrown around a lot on Linux forums, free and open source software forums. Here in the last year or two, especially, it's really ramped up to where people on these forums are actively telling people, quit using Xorg, Xorg's broken, stop using Xorg, move to Wayland already, Wayland is the future. And they're right, Wayland is the future. And the reason this has really ramped up in the last year or two is because really in the last couple of years, KDE, Plasma, and GNOME have really gotten there as far as Wayland, where if you're running GNOME or KDE Plasma, you can essentially live in Wayland for the most part. Depending on some of your hardware choices, Wayland could still be an issue for you. But for most of the users out there, if you want to run GNOME or KDE Plasma and live in Wayland, it's pretty much ready right now. It still has some work, but you can do it. And because of that, a lot of these People that are using Wayland, especially on GNOME and KDE Plasma, are trying to tell people, quit using XOR. XOR, it's deprecated, it's broken, it's just in maintenance mode, it's not being actively maintained, and that's kind of correct. They're, they're not adding new features to XOR anymore. The folks that maintain XOR, they're not trying to do new stuff with XOR because they already know Wayland is the future. They would be wasting their time at this point to work on XOR as far as adding new features because they see XOR eventually will die and, and people, pretty much all of us, will be on Wayland at some point. But just because Wayland is the future, does that mean Xorg is broken? Like right now, does Xorg work on your system? It works on my system. Most of you guys are probably running Xorg. You're running a, either a desktop environment or a window manager that's a X11 desktop environment slash window manager. Is your machine broken? Probably not. It's probably working just fine. So again, don't let these people shame you into running a piece of software that's actually working for you. You have to keep in mind that a lot of these people on the internet that are trying to tell you what pieces of software to not use, what pieces of software you should use, a lot of these people are damaged, broken people. A lot of these people, they actually identify with the software that they run and they need to validate their choices as far as software. And how do they validate their choice in software? Well, they try to make you also run that same piece of software because if they can get more people to use that particular software, then it, it kind of validates their choice, right? It makes them feel better like they made the right decision. And if you're one of these people that do that, that go on the internet, and try to tell people what to use, what not to use, please stop doing that. And if you're one of the people that spread some of the fear mongering as far as certain pieces of software, they, their, their release cadence isn't quite as fast as you'd like it. Maybe they haven't had a release in a few months, few years, whatever it happens to be. Don't tell people that they shouldn't use that program. Don't don't tell people that it's dangerous to use that program unless it's actually dangerous to use that program. If there's some kind of glaring security holes, tell people about that, right? Don't tell people to quit using a piece of software because it hasn't seen a release in the last year. Tell people to quit using a piece of software if it has a real security issue and let them know what that security issue is. That's what you should be doing. Ran over, guys. Peace.